Hello and welcome to the Syncor Experience Commerce 9 Deep Dive Series. We have six videos in total, touching on each of the features in Experience Commerce 9. And that starts out with this video now, the introduction to Syncor Experience Commerce 9. Next up, we have a deep dive on the new catalog system. Following that, we're going to take a look at the customers and orders feature. We then have a video going into the various architecture pieces involved. This is followed by a video showing how to extend the engine using the plugin functionality provided. And finally, we have a video covering the new extension to Cycle Experience Accelerator, SXA Storefront. So let's dive straight into it. Let's take a look at the features that are provided out of the box in Cycle Experience Commerce 9. These are standard features that you expect to see in the, any e-commerce platform. You have the ability to add, remove and update products stored within a cart assigned to the user browsing the site. You have the ability to capture all of the necessary information required for a user to complete an order. You can create multiple online shopping experiences tailoring each to your exact needs. Individually specifying the language, payment, shipping, and fulfillment details as you require. You can specify the catalog details. You have the ability to manage all of the items that are for sale on your site. You can also manage the inventory of each of the products you have for sale. You can track entitlements. These are assigned to users as they purchase things in the site and are typically used for things like digital downloads where there's no actual physical fulfillment involved. You can also process fulfillments itself, be this digital or physical, all this is provided out of the box. It's really easy to integrate with any third party payment provider you require and there's an example included in the SDK for integrating with Braintree. You can also manage an order through its entire life cycle. There's a powerful pricing functionality to enable flexible and dynamic pricing for your products. And there's a promotion engine, which is flexible and highly extendable for you to be able to create tailored promotions that exactly meet your business requirements. On top of that, we're introducing a brand new merchandiser interface. This is called the BizFX Tools. It's built from the ground up using the latest development technologies, using Angular 4, all of the views are data driven. It's very simple for you to extend it to include any custom functionality you require. Access is controlled via federated authentication and it's built upon a microservices based architecture. Looking at the catalog and inventory system, we've introduced the concept of sellable items as an item that's for sale on a site, for example, a product. These can now be added to multiple catalogs and the schema is based on the schema.org product schema. We have support for variants, catalog, categories, inventory sets. You can handle multilingual data and this is extendable via composition. We're going to have another video in this series which is going to specifically deep dive on these features. It's going to give you a very detailed overview of what's involved. With the customer and orders feature, we have a comprehensive order management functionality. You have the ability to track an order through its entire life cycle. Customer service reps also have the ability to place an order on hold as required and then re-release it afterwards when it's available. We also have comprehensive customer management functionality. You can see all interactions that a customer has had with your site. You can view all orders placed by a user and what state they're currently in and view all the entitlements that the customer has purchased. We're going to have another video which deep dives on the customer and order features and that's going to go to a much greater detail on both of those pieces of functionality and give you a really good level of knowledge on how they function. We also have extensible and dynamic pricing available out of the box. You create a price book that's associated to a catalog and that contains a series of price cards within it. Price cards are used to assign dynamic pricing varying by currency or by date. They also allow you to do tiered pricing based on quantity and time frame. 
and you can snapshot your pricing to have a start and end date, which gives you a really fine grain level of control over the pricing of the sellable items on your site. On top of that, all of this functionality is extendable and customizable via the plugin architecture. This allows you to create testable, auditable pricing scenarios. And this is achieved through price messaging. What that means is that you can provide some contextual messaging which is stored against the price snapshot you create. And that means in the future, if you want to go back to see why certain pricing was applied to certain sellable items, you have the full contextual history of the price for a range of products, meaning you have all that information right at your fingertips. In a similar way to pricing, promotions are also stored in a promotion book. Now this promotion book contains a group of promotions enabled for a specific catalogue. For each of those promotions, you get a set of promotion qualifications provided out of the box. These allow you to set up qualifications for things like users who have completed certain campaigns, arrived via certain channels, have certain catalog items in their cart, or have specific profile attributes assigned. Like for example, they've previously ordered a certain sellable item on your site. You also get a series of benefits provided out of the box as well. These are what the user is provided with when they meet the qualifications you've assigned. This allows you, for example, to do order and line item adjustments. You can do benefits based on order quantity or other orders, assign free gifts, or do shipping adjustments and changes to other fulfillment fees. On top of all that, the pricing and promotion functionality has workflow management built into it. This means that any new price cards or promotions have to be reviewed and approved before they're usable on the live site. What's more, you get contextual messaging around the approval and rejection. You can also create coupons in the site. These are tracked for you automatically. And you can also, out of the box, generate coupon batches with unique codes, prefixes, and suffixes. On top of all that, Sitecore Experience Commerce 9 is fully integrated with Sitecore's digital marketing tools and XConnect. That means you have the ability to personalize, run A-B tests, multivariant tests, and hook into the marketing automation functionality. On top of that, out of the box, you get 43 page events, four goals, and two outcomes, all specific for commerce data tracking. It also extends the personalization rules to allow you to provide a highly personalized and tailored browsing experience for your users based on specific commerce related data points. For example, total cart condition, the total quantities, or exact or certain line items being in the cart. Also, we're introducing SXA Storefront. As I mentioned before, this is an extension to Sitecore Experience Accelerator and it allows you to drastically reduce your development time and as so, your time to market. This comes with over 40 pre-built commerce controls, which are all fully Helix compliant. And on top of that, you get a full end-to-end -end storefront out of the box. This can rapidly decrease your time to market. We have another video in this series covering SXA storefront, and that's gonna be great to watch because it's gonna go into this in a lot of detail. But how is all this powered? All this is powered by the brand new Sitecore Commerce Engine. This has been built from the ground up using the latest development technologies. It's built against .NET Core, the latest and greatest development framework from Microsoft. And all data communication happens using the industry standard OData protocol. This means that you can be confident in the fact that you really are on the cutting edge when you deliver your storefront. The engine is built up of a series of components. The first of these is the concept of an environment. You can specify multiple environments for your implementation, and these have different business rules attached to them. For example, the environment that handles requests from your storefront would have very different configuration from the environment that handles requests from your authoring tools, as it's a different business case involved. The service API is split into multiple levels, giving you logical separation of concerns. We have an operations API for DevOps commands and management of the site. We have an authoring API for merchandising tasks, for example, editing the catalog items. 
We have a shops API, which is used to handle requests from the storefront. For example, customers viewing products and going through the checkout process. And we also have a minions API, and that is an asynchronous task runner designed to handle um, actions behind the scenes. Auditing is fully enabled out of the box. You get a complete audit history of every entity that's created on the site, and it's enabled by default. We're introducing the concept of policies. A policy is a set of business rules, which can be used, for example, to define the maximum number of products a user could add to a cart, or the caching length for how long you want to cache your products. Any kind of setting like that, which relates to the commerce engine, will be stored in a policy. We have the concept of views. Now these are a little different to MVC views. These are data views that are used to populate the merchandising interface I mentioned before. These are all highly customizable and you can create your own, which hook directly into the merchandising UI through the plugin based architecture. And the plugins, as I keep mentioning, are the way you extend the engine. There's a series of extensibility points, allowing you to easily add your own functionality with minimal effort. So the engine itself is designed and engineered for a microservices based world. It's lightweight microservices host, built using service composition for plugin service extensibility. We provide the source for it in an SDK, allowing you to build the exact version of the engine that you need for your implementation. Access to the engine is secured by a certificate and federated authentication, and it's designed for scalability, integration, and the cloud. It's also really easy to deploy. Standard web deploy technologies are used to make continuous integration a piece of cake. As I mentioned before, this is all built on top of ASP.NET Core 2.0, Microsoft's newest technology for development. ASP.NET Core is all open source, and we've had direct interaction with the ASP.NET Core team to make sure this is a success. It's also built against a new Commerce Core framework. This is multi-tenant and multi-environment from the get-go. It leverages and aligns itself with the Sitecore framework, the common code base that's going to be used for the next generation of Sitecore applications. And it includes a centralized policy management system, which means you get a reduced deployment footprint, multi-tenant policies, and the ability to cascade policies from your global settings through to environment down to an individual shop. As I mentioned before, we also have the asynchronous service agents known as minions. These are used to process background jobs, for example, pushing orders through their various different states and interacting with third party systems. As I said before, the engine comes in four different roles. You have the DevOps role, which is used to manage the overall commerce environment. It's generally installed in a protective area and requires elevated access. Here you can manage all of your environments, your policies and your global artifacts. You have the shop role, which is used to handle the uh, storefront activity. This is designed for high scale servicing of the cycle commerce experience. For example, handling shopping cart activities, order services. We have the authoring role, which is used to manage the entities and the entity views, which make up the back end features. These are like the merchandising experience and allowing your customer service reps to manage the orders. And finally, the minions, the asynchronous business processes. Things for post order capture, external integration, and any background tasks that don't require a user input. When it comes to the plugin functionality, this allows a rapid development experience. It makes it really easy to extend and enhance the site called core commerce experience. And it's they're designed for isolation. That means multiple plugins can coexist without conflict between each other. On top of that, all of the commerce engine features you use are developed as plugins. We build the engine in the same way you will build it. That can give you the confidence that this architecture is as robust as we can make it. This allows you to add custom functionality to the engine directly. But it doesn't just have to be custom functionality you created. You can pull down open source packages using the source directly of maybe via a NuGet package. It gives you a lot of options for how you want to build on the base functionality. Now we have another video in this deep dive series focusing purely on the plugin architecture provided in the engine. This is going to touch on each of the extensibility points and show how you can use those to create plugins to provide the custom functionality you need for your site. On top of that, it's really simple to deploy. 
this is the easiest deployment process for Site4 Commerce we've had to date. That's because it's all built on top of the new Site4 installer framework that was released with Site4 9. This is a set of PowerShell scripts provided to you to perform all of the common tasks you need to do for deployment. For example, setting up IIS sites, creating databases, setting permissions, all of that is handled for you. We provide a full deployment script out of the box, and that is fully supported by Sitecore. You can take those and use them as is, or if you want, if you need to tailor it to something slightly different, you can use those as a base to build out your own custom run scripts as well. Not only that, Sitecore Experience Commons 9 is also natively PaaS supported. You can provision Sitecore Commons in Azure with very little effort. We have seamless integration with Azure resources, you can use standard Azure tooling, and you have the ability to push content and develop customizations. This makes it really simple to create highly available, disaster recoverable architectures. For further information, be sure to check out the Master Sitecore channel on YouTube, along with our developer, documentation, and community sites at the addresses you can see here. Hopefully that's given you a quick overview of what's being released in Sitecore Experience Commerce 9. You should definitely watch the rest of the deep dive series, going into a much greater detail on each of the new features that have been introduced. Thanks.